Reddit, identifier of the Boston bomber, home to infamous jailbait community, and habitual stomping ground for renowned internet troll Violent Acres, has outdone itself today by setting up a dedicated community for hoarding and re-hosting the recently leaked photographs of celebrities, and is calling it, wait for it, the Fappening. We couldn't make this shit up if we tried. The Fappening. Otherwise known as that time, over 600 private photographs of female celebrities like Jennifer Lawrence, Kate Upton, and Mary Elizabeth Winstead were leaked onto the internet for the whole world to see. To this day, it remains the single greatest and easily most infamous series of celebrity leaks in history, with the outcry generated having an extremely pervasive effect on online discourse, security, and culture. When the My Little Pony forums are discussing it, you know it's a topic Turkey Tom has got to cover. Today, we're going to explore all of that and more. The crisis that single-handedly brought sites like Reddit and 4chan into the spotlight, spawned outrage across mainstream outlets that brought into question the practices around online privacy and security, and led to an FBI investigation into those who brought the pictures to light, when a closed network of individuals was able to plunder the private information and photographs of Hollywood's biggest names. Today, we're going to comprehensively retell the story behind the fappening to see how it all went down. Do we even know who is this 4chan? August 31st, 2014, a thread on 4chan is created. The thread features uncensored photos of nude celebrities, coupled with a Bitcoin address and the promise of more images in exchange for cash. Soon after the thread was posted, things began rapidly spiraling out of control. New threads began appearing across the board, some scams to steal users' Bitcoin, and some being incredibly underwhelming for those buying. But some Anons had entirely new photos, never before seen to the public, featuring various celebrities in increasingly scant states of dress. Reddit would soon follow. Two posts uploaded to r slash Jennifer Lawrence and r slash Kate Upton respectively would mark the beginning of the antics. The comments that remain give us interesting insight into the thoughts of the time. Please let there be a leaked sex tape, please. This thing is blowing up. Imagine what happens when a high quality nude pops out of nowhere. Edit, the internet is breaking. I know no one can see this, but the internet is breaking. Good lord, look at the size of those things. On what remains of the discussions on r slash Jennifer Lawrence, there began a moral debate over the ethical of the nudes. I'm not comfortable with how this image was obtained. We cannot decry the use of intelligence communities like the NSA while indulging in illegally obtained pictures of other people. It is hypocrisy. But this is wrong. It's hypocrisy of the highest order for Reddit to complain endlessly about the NSA, then applaud when very personal photos of celebrities are stolen and shared with the world. Wubba lubba dub dub. Within a matter of moments, both threads would make it to the Reddit front page, r slash all. At one point, at least seven out of the top eight posts on r slash all were related to Jennifer Lawrence in some capacity. More posts would come spreading indecent pictures of even more celebrities, like Kirsten Dunst, Mary Elizabeth Winstead, Kaylee Cuoco, and Yvonne Strahovski. In a thread on r slash celebs comes the first widely recorded mention of the now infamous portmanteau, The Fappening, used by u slash exile on Mean Street. I have dubbed this mass leak, The Fappening. It is on the same thread, and a now deleted comment that the first discussions around a subreddit dedicated exclusively to documenting and sharing the situation. Reddit user Johns McJohn would notify fellow Redditors that he had created the new subreddit, r slash The Fappening. As purported Reddit historian Unholy Demigod put in his post on the fappening, the subreddit exploded instantly. In all of Reddit's history, no subreddit has ever come close to being as initially popular as the fappening. Within the first 24 hours, it amassed 100,000 subscribers. As it happened over the weekend, it brought an influx of people who weren't at work to the site an influx that led to 141 million page views in one day. That is, roughly, what r slash ask reddit gets in a month. More and more exclusive images were released to the wider public. Quickly, the leaks climbed, over a matter of days, and well over 100 celebrities had their nude images plastered online. To advertise just how deep the rabbit hole went, a list would be published on 4chan, those listed being the victims whose photographs were about to be exposed to the entire internet. Mary-Kate Olsen, Rihanna, and Victoria Justice are just a few. Reddit was facing constant outages due to the then unprecedented amount of users seeking to access the site. Writing for the blogging website Business2 Community, Jay Leonard would report, how much do the users of Reddit want to see naked pictures of Jennifer Lawrence, Selena Gomez, Kate Upton, and dozens of other female celebrities? If the fappening is any indication, there are at least 100,000 people just sitting at their computers, 
waiting for more nude photos to be uploaded to the internet. Live updates were provided with GIFs, pictures, videos, and discussions, all moderated by user Not Safe for Whales. Leonard would capture a screenshot of the live updates, the view count sitting at an impressive 101,000 276 individual users. Reddit staff would hold an internal emergency meeting to figure out what we're going to do about the situation. Things were going pretty crazy at the moment, with many folks out for the weekend and the site struggling to stay afloat. We had some immediate issues we had to address. First, the amount of traffic hitting this content was breaking the site in various ways. Second, we were already getting DMCA and takedown notices by the owners of these photos. Third, if we were going to remove anything on the site, whether it be for technical, legal, or ethical obligations, it would likely result in backlash where things kept getting posted over and over, thwarting our efforts and possibly making the situation worse. Articles in the press were flying out and we were getting comment requests left and right. Many community members were understandably angered at our lack of action or response, and made that known in various ways. This nightmare of the weekend and made myself and many of my coworkers feel pretty awful. I had an obvious responsibility to keep the site up and running, but seeing that all of my efforts were due to a huge number of people scrambling to look at stolen private photos didn't sit well with me personally, to say the least. We hit new traffic milestones, ones that I'd be ashamed to share publicly. Our general stance on this stuff is that Reddit is a platform, as there are times when platforms get used for very deplorable things. We take down things we're legally required to take down, and do our best to keep the site from getting spammed or manipulated, and beyond that, we try to keep our hands off. Still, in the moment, seeing what was happening, it was hard to see much merit to that viewpoint. This mad rush to address the issue at hand was only made murkier by the revelation that images of actress, Liz Lee, and the Olympian gymnast, Michaela Maroney, actually constituted CP. Reportedly, the images of the two were taken before either reached the legal age of 18. Reddit staff were quickly notified. We were alerted that some of these photos depicted minor which is where we have drawn a clear line in the sand. In response, we immediately started removing things on Reddit which we found to be leaking to those pictures, and also recommended that the image host be contacted so that they could be removed more permanently. We do not allow links on Reddit to CP or images which sexualize children. If you disagree with that stance and believe Reddit cannot draw that line while also being a platform, I'd encourage you to leave. Discussions regarding the unraveling situation were tumultuous at best and outright vitriolic at worst. However, these discussions widely varied depending on these sites. 4chan, for example, were far more lax about the leaks than the other sites. This is the first time the libtard crowd started caring about privacy since Bush's Patriot Act. During Snowden's leaks, they didn't care because it was their chocolate sexual fantasy, Obama, behind the invasion of privacy. They said nothing. When Donald Sterling's private conversation forced a billion dollar sale, they said nothing because das racist. When Anthony Weiner, Brett Favor, Hulk Hogan, or any other male celebrity had their dick out there, they said nothing. Now that it's women being hurt, they finally say something. I, for one, consider this a victory and will fap guilt-free to Jennifer Lawrence pictures. Within minutes of the pictures making it onto the front page of Reddit, the event and the victims like Jennifer Lawrence were trending on Twitter. Beyond the occasional remark or opinion, Twitter was generally far more supportive of the victims, beyond obviously the gossip that it generated. I just hope to heck this doesn't ruin this amazingly talented, grounded young woman's confidence and thus career. Guys, can you please stop tweeting nudes of Jennifer Lawrence? She's a person. What are you doing? Think before you tweet. 4chan, by comparison, simply had no fucks to give. Alongside Reddit users, they were far too busy pleading for leaks of Emma Watson, speculating who could be next, and attempting to verify the identity of purported wins through moles, beauty spots, and even paint chips. During this time, Reddit sought to balance both sides of the argument through a policy of free speech. Despite the outrage from the mainstream media, who argued Reddit was facilitating the continued sharing of these images. Fuck Reddit and fuck the asshole admins who are letting this happen. The admins talk about not putting people's information on here, yet when it's a celebrity, it's fine. Or maybe it's just because it's only hurting women. How could Reddit possibly delete the amount of posts that are coming in? Should they delete every nude picture of a woman or just Jennifer Lawrence? What about other celebrities? Where do you draw the line? I don't think admins would respond any differently if it was a male celebrity either. I swear to fucking God. The next time a Redditor sends me a dick pic, I'm gonna post it everywhere I possibly can, with scathing commentary. See how you like it. Like seriously, are there not enough consenting naked women on the internet for you to look at? Are titties more fun to look at if you know the person in that picture is probably heartbroken and humiliated by the fact that you're looking at her? What is wrong with consenting titties? So they're celebrity titties. Big fucking deal. There's still a human being attached 
attached to them. Oh, but they're non-consenting titties of a celebrity you really want to see naked? Look how many fucks I give. The answer is zero. Zero fucks. Ugh! The more I think about it, the more angry I get. Shortly after their release, following confirmation that Reddit would not seek to involve itself, individual subreddits would begin clamping down on the spread of the leaked images. One Reddit staff member would recount that during this time, we continued to receive DMCA takedowns, as these images were constantly rehosted and linked to on Reddit. And in response, we continued to remove what we're legally obligated to, and beyond that, instructed the rights holders on how to contact image hosts. In a now-deleted post by a moderator on r slash Jennifer Lawrence, we can see confirmation that they would remove all posts on the topic in an attempt to prevent further discussion and distribution of these images. Feel free to downvote, but I couldn't agree more. There's a 24-year-old girl in a hotel room right now crying because the whole world just saw her naked. Think about it. Jennifer Lawrence's agent would speak out during this time to British newspaper, The Mirror. Lambasting both the hackers and those perpetuating the images online, he would claim it was a flagrant violation of privacy, before adding, the authorities have been contacted and will prosecute anyone who posts these stolen photos of Jennifer Lawrence. Despite the goodwill of Reddit moderators, most of the threads and comments had already been archived, because of course they were. Expect 4chan and Reddit to be all over Google news, because this is gonna blow the fuck up. The media shitstorm over this will create enough popcorn to feed every nation in the world for over a hundred years. Truly prophetic words, I must say. New break in a case involving a massive invasion of privacy for some big stars, including Jennifer Lawrence and Kate Upton. The A-list celebrities themselves whose privacy was breached, the millions who have guiltily clicked on illegally gotten images, even the hacker himself who's complained about how little money he got for exposing them on 4chan. And then they were reposted to Reddit, Perez Hilton, and various other blogs. He may, and I'm sure we're gonna we're gonna be able to get some more confirmation on this as the as the hours and and minutes go on. Uh, he may have been just a system administrator who knew his way around and how to hack things. British newspaper The Telegraph would publish an article: new Jennifer Lawrence photos leaked by hacker who claims to have private photos of 100 A-listers. It would rapidly become the most viewed story of the day, while giving a cursory view of the rapidly unraveling situation. As one Reddit user, ASPZ, put it, one thing that isn't mentioned in this video is just how eagerly the news media lapped this up. Every story would lead with a photo of Jennifer Lawrence and list the names of the other most prominent and most attractive celebrities, as if to say, hey guys, do you want to see nude photos of your favorite celeb? Just go over to this site called reddit.com. They could easily have made this a story about cybersecurity or sharing of stolen photos without mentioning the celebrities' names. But no, they have to go with whatever Jennifer generates the most clicks. And of course, the prospect of seeing Jennifer Lawrence naked is going to generate clicks. The amount of hypocritical righteousness from the media was ridiculous. During the meltdown that consumed the online web space, it's important to remember the actual victims of the situation, those who had everything to lose. Widely believed to be the most affected by the fiasco was Hunger Games star Jennifer Lawrence, who had over 60 indecent images leaked onto the internet. When speaking about the situation, Lawrence said, when I first found out it was happening, my security reached out to me. It was happening minute to minute. It was almost like a ransom situation where they were releasing new ones every hour or so. Speaking to Vanity Fair, she would admit, I was just so afraid. I didn't know how this would affect my career. Other victims, like Victoria Justice and Mary Elizabeth Winstead, would tweet about their involvement in the breaches. In defiance to the leaks, Justice tweeted, These so-called nudes of me are fake people. Let me nip this in the bud right now. Pun intended. Winstead took a more concerned view on her pictures. To those of you looking at photos I took with my husband years ago in the privacy of our home, hope you feel great about yourselves. Knowing those photos were deleted long ago, I can only imagine the creepy effort that went into this. Feeling for everyone who got hacked. Kirsten Dunst, meanwhile, would tweet a very simple message. Thank you, iCloud. Actress Lena Dunham would plead with users on Twitter to not even view the photos. You are violating these women over and over again. It's not okay. Fellow actress Emma Watson would join her. Even worse than seeing women's privacy violated on social media is reading the accompanying comments that show such a lack of empathy. Comedian Ricky Gervais would have a slightly less sympathetic view to those who were having their nude photos leaked online. On the Monday following the fappening, Gervais would tweet, Celebrities, make it harder for hackers to get nude pics of you from your computer by not putting nude pics of yourself on your computer. A disappointing flame war ensued. Gervais would delete his tweet and roll back his view, claiming, 
Of course, the hackers are 100% to blame, but you can still make jokes about it. Jokes don't portray your true, serious feelings on a subject. But that still wasn't enough for those like Dunham. The don't take naked pics if you don't want them online argument is the same as the she was wearing a short skirt of the web. Ugh. Whatever gripes individuals had, Justice and Winstead would nonetheless receive massive amounts of support for publicly speaking out. But Winstead was nonetheless right to be worried. The lack of knowledge and growing amount of rumors surrounding the perpetrators was certainly a cause for concern. The breach of iCloud accounts was a major blow to the public's confidence in Apple's security. Such a major blow, in fact, that Apple CEO, Tim Cook, would conduct an interview with American newspaper, The Wall Street Journal, regarding the leaks. We want to do everything we can to protect our customers, because we are as outraged, if not more so, than they are. Apple's plan to do this was to add additional steps to iCloud security. They also began broadly encouraging the use of two-factor authentication in future iOS updates. But Apple wasn't the only organization seeking to investigate the rapidly unfolding situation. On the 2nd of September, the FBI would confirm that it was aware of the allegations concerning computer intrusions and the unlawful release of material involving high-profile individuals. And, although it was addressing the matter, they also stated that any further comment would be inappropriate. Least to say, despite the overwhelming circumstances, ultimately, the FBI investigation would bear fruit. Initial rumors were rife at this time, with many attempting to figure out who could be behind the leaks. Poor Chan. Many more began discussing who should be held responsible for the breach. Initially, many would point to celebrity insiders, such as friends, staff, and even former spouses as potential culprits, but nothing could be explicitly confirmed. Others would spread gossip that the hacker had been selling videos of his collection to TMZ for six figures. He was not. Nonetheless, accusations flew, with multi-billion dollar tech conglomerate, Apple at the center. News outlets would widely report the rumor that iCloud accounts had been breached via negligence on Apple's front. If this was in fact the case, the legal oblivion that Apple would face for negligence would be palpable. As one user, Nick House, put it, I don't think too many people will quite understand what alleged iCloud hack means. And I think Apple is also putting their legal team on DEF CON 1 at the moment and filing strongly worded letters to anyone who doesn't use the word alleged in connection with any Apple-owned product. There were discussions of a single hacker using an exploit in Apple's Find My iPhone service. The exploit was coined iBrute. This exploit would supposedly give the hacker infinite password attempts to brute force the cracking of various Apple IDs. The exploit was uploaded to GitHub on August 30th, a day prior to the fappening receiving mainstream attention before Apple patched the bug on September 1st. Brute forcing refers to a method of hacking where hackers create a piece of software that cycles through various possible password combinations for an account until access is granted. As ZDNet writer Adrian Kingsley Hughes put it, whether the two incidents are linked is at present unknown, but the timing of the release of the code and the hack certainly suggests a link. If there is a link, then this will be a pretty high profile black guy for Apple, doubly so given the proximity of the official unveiling of the iPhone 6. Ultimately, while the iBroot proof of concept was indeed real and a very serious issue, it was not in fact the method that hackers used to gain access to the photographs. British newspaper, the Daily Mail, would report that, according to one anonymous 4chan poster, the release of photographs of celebrities was the product of an underground trading ring. The poster claimed that the ring had been in operation for months, and posters would trade or sell the photos they retrieved between each other. Another poster, who claims to have been involved, wrote on a non-IB that the hacking had been several months in the making, and the nude photos were the result of several months of long and hard work by all involved. A rather poignant explanation of what happened was uploaded to the blogging website nickcub.com. Run for the purpose of discussing news surrounding Bitcoin and other crypto cryptocurrencies, the article in full seems to be lost. However, extracts remain, mainly on the query website Quora. User Christine Choi writes, I found this great article that details how the photos could have been obtained. Apparently, this guy spent the past few days immersed in and researching what was going down. It's a fascinating read, and also horrifying, that people would actually be willing to spend so much time and effort to violate someone's privacy. The first post from this set that I could track down was nearly five days before the story became public, on the 26th of August. Each of these posts was a censored image, with a request for an amount of money for an uncensored version. After numerous such posts, and nobody paying attention to it, thinking it was a scam, the person behind the post began publishing uncensored versions, which quickly propagated on a non-IB, 
4chan and reddit. My theory is that other members of the ring, seeing the leaks and requests for money, also decided to attempt to cash in, thinking the value of the images would soon approach zero, which led to a race to the bottom between those who had access to them. However, it's worth noting that others purport that the first sets of images were originally posted to a non-IB weeks before the actual fappening. These sets were traded with other collections, and on the Friday prior to the fappening, the collector would offer his entire collection for Bitcoin donations. The seller would make over $50,000 worth of Bitcoin during this time. Discussions of the offer would spread to 4chan's random board until a poster began leaking images of Jennifer Lawrence. That was the moment that things began spiraling out of control. Shit got weird once I started posting samples. People wanted shit for free. I proved I had shit, but people wanted more and more and were trying to find me. My ISP kept cutting out. Weird emails were coming in. Kind of freaked me out, so I had to leave. Whatever, the specific timeline of events, this explanation gives reason as to why there wasn't a single, massive leak of images, but rather, a steady flow that soon amounted to the largest leak of compromising images in celebrity history. It is unknown how many hackers were involved in retrieving all the data, but the suggestion is that the list of celebrities was the internal list of one for the trading networks. Timestamps, forum posts, and other data suggest that the collection was built up over a long period of time. The vast stretch of time over which all of the pictures and information was compiled seemingly disallows Apple from being personally responsible for negligence. However, it remains worthy of note that Apple services were targeted specifically for their vulnerabilities in comparison to other corporations. iCloud is the most popular target because picture roll backups are enabled by default and iPhone is a popular platform. Apple accounts seem particularly vulnerable because of the recovery process, password requirements, and ability to detect if an email has an associated iCloud account. Brute force attempts are simple. Prior to the release of information on 4chan, the trading group, initially responsible for obtaining and sharing these images, seemingly valued secrecy when conducting their operations. Word rarely spread about them. To even join, you'd have to trade your own, exclusive photos. From there, collections would grow through the trading of wins, referring to newly found pictures. This decentralized network meant not one collection would be the same as the other. The hours that members of this group spent scouring the internet, gathering information, and making contact with each other would ultimately spread over months. As one 4chan user put it when describing the first leak, very few people even found out about the ring, and fewer still have pictures to buy in with, except for the self-styled rich kid in the original B thread. It appears he bought a few sample pics and blew the lid on this whole operation by sharing them with outsiders for the first time. Spotting their chance, and realizing the existence of the nude collection was revealed, a couple of other guys came out of the woodwork, offering up some of their collections for donations. Once photos began getting leaked, others would quickly begin selling off their collections, upon the realization that it meant their catalog would become worthless. This rush was only incentivized further, since it was unknown who was leaking what, who had access to which photos, and just how quickly the situation would spiral into chaos. Simply put, the incentive was to sell the photos as quickly as possible, lest their time, effort, and work be worth nothing. The ultimate message of the blog is a rather haunting one, questioning just how far the rabbit hole goes, in regards to the operations even beyond the group behind the fappening. What we see in the public with these hacking incidents seems to only be scratching the surface. There are entire communities and trading networks where the data that is stolen remains private and is rarely shared with the public. The networks are broken down horizontally, with specific people carrying out specific roles, loosely organized across a large number of sites, both clearnet and darknet, with most organization and communication taking place in private. The same 4chan user would expand on this. We aren't getting the really good movies, because they are much more valuable, and therefore, A, owned by fewer people, and B, could be traded for many more nudes and would lose all value if released for free. Brace for multiple arrests as the net tightens around the trading ring. While the anonymous user was right to warn about the quickly tightening net, there's far more miscellaneous side stories to cover before we get to that point. For now, we're left to pick at the pieces and enjoy the relative calm before the judicial storm that's yet to come. Unfortunately, this Saturday evening, the fappening continued with new leaked photos of celebrities on 4chan and Reddit. Can we criminalize this in a way that actually has some teeth to it that would prevent this from happening? One week after the original creation of r slash the fappening, Reddit administrators would end up banning the subreddit in what was a total 180 on the previous policy. In response to the fappening and the massive scrutiny facing Reddit for facilitating both discussion and distribution, Reddit CEO Yaishan Wong would release a massive Word document titled Every man is responsible for his own soul. The document itself is now seemingly lost, 
with the link redirecting to the Reddit blog instead. But at the time, it detailed Reddit's affirmation to free speech and maintaining said free speech. However, many felt that this stance was promptly contradicted when administrators decided to take down r slash the fappening following a suite of DMCA takedown notices from the legal representatives of fappening victims. The response to the blog was, disappointed at best, and enraged at worst. Oh, fuck right off. The internet, including Reddit, had been posting slash looking at pictures of corpses, people dressed or acting stupid, ex-girlfriend pictures, videos of humans dying, etc, etc, ad nauseum. But this is the line, fucking nude selfies of celebrities, that is apparently where the internet finds its morality. Get off the high horse, holy shit. You guys are a bunch of hypocrites, and this post is bullshit. There are tons of really fucked up subreddits, like 4chan level shit, and nothing is done. This is all about covering your ass not doing the right thing. If this had been an ethical decision, r slash the fappening would have been banned immediately. Subreddits with compromising pictures of underage girls existed for years, probably still do, until the media made a stink, forcing the admins to act. So perhaps, get off your high horse. Every man is responsible for his own soul, but that is not what this is about. You guys are no different than any other shallow corporate fucks. And by the way, Imager was extremely active in deleting pictures as they were posted. Why did Reddit take so long to act? Lecturing the community about it from a position of moral authority, only after profiting from a massive influx of traffic slash Reddit gold, is just insulting. If you wish to claim any moral standing at all, refund all revenue gained from the subreddits in question. That uh, did not happen, by the way. So the fappening is banned because we all need to protect America's sweethearts, but we still have r slash candid fashion police, r slash cute female corpses, r slash sex with dogs, and r slash sexy abortions? and many, many more. But glad to see we have our priorities straight. The criticism of Reddit was hardly unfounded. r slash the fappening creator, John Menaces, also known as Johns McJohn, would speak to American news website Wired following the subreddit's banning. In just six days, Reddit earned enough money from the scandal to power its servers for roughly a month. That statistic is based on how many times the members of the subreddit paid for so-called Reddit gold. The $3.99 per month premium accounts that users often gift to each other to bestow a few extra features and prestige. It's also worth noting that Johns McJohns estimates do not include any advertising revenue that the site gained from r slash the fappening, following the quarter billion page views that the subreddit got during its short time on the web. If Reddit had wanted to, they could have banned us on Sunday when our traffic broke their servers. Instead, they chose to milk a week of publicity and a month of server time in Reddit gold before they stepped in. Other Reddit users were equally as scathing to their assessments. I'm calling it. This is Reddit's jump the shark moment. This post right here. You're being correctly called out as hypocrites by both sides. This is delicious. I've never read a more sniveling, cowardly load of self-contradictory doublespeak and equivocation. Didn't you just shadow ban a mod of r slash black ladies for disrupting Reddit culture? Isn't she a member of this site as much as anyone else? Why should she be silenced when you want users to govern themselves? How's that for free speech? Can't you just admit this is because of pressure on the site? Don't spoon feed us all this other bullshit trying to justify it. With all the other things the site has and still allows, the line gets drawn when a bunch of nude celebrity pictures come out. Everything I've read so far seems like an excuse, not a reason. They're doing the exact same thing they do every time there's bad press. Deal with it at the last possible moment, like with r slash jailbait. Then they play it off like some moral revelation and use free speech as the reason why it doesn't set a precedent. It is identical to what always happens. Realizing the massive upheaval that the blog post had incurred from the Reddit community, many admins would begin trying to defend the original post, in a futile attempt to divert the anger coming their way. Regarding r slash the fappening, the subreddit was banned for a number of reasons. The biggest factor was the fact that, when we would do an official DMCA takedown of an image, almost immediately afterwards, users would find a new image host to repost the image. In addition, many of these images were of underage celebrities, which violates rule 4 of the site. No sexually suggested of content featuring minors. We understand that the moderators did the best they could with the situation they had, but having users purposefully try and circumvent the takedowns was starting to become a whack-a-mole game. Heck, one user even stated explicitly that they were going to make a point of rehosting the images on other image hosts because they were being removed because of DMCA takedown requests. In addition to that, other users were rehosting the images on pay-per-click sites and sites that spread malware, which resulted in many bans of many domains and users. These factors led us to decide that the subreddit and many of its sister subreddits were in violation of Rule 5 of the site. Don't do anything that interferes with normal use of the website. The demand for that particular material actually caused access issues with the site at times. 
r slash the fappening moderator, Gorefox, would respond to this post. While it really, really does suck that we were banned, I completely understand where you're coming from. We had a good run. Other users would rush to the admin's defense. I think a lot of people are missing the point. Reddit is trying to put itself into a spot where it only acts on things when it is legally required for them to do so. If something is not served a DMCA notice and it isn't against Reddit's own rules, then we are not touching it. Others were not so keen to support the actions. You're shitting me, right? You are taking down a subreddit of nude celebs because of bullshit reasons and you know it. How can you justify the banning of a subreddit like that? Yet dead children, naked corpses, and necrophilia are all up. This is the most obnoxious, retarded post I have read in a long, long time. Just be honest with us and say, we caved under pressure, or we sold out, and that will be fine. Reddit's CEO would respond, claiming, those are great examples of subreddits that discuss or distribute content that we don't like, but which we choose not to exercise our power to delete. We allow you to create them. We don't promote them on the front page or in blog posts or to the media. They are a great example of where we don't use our position of influence to highlight content we don't personally agree with. There's an impression that we only make changes in policy when there's a big media blow up. It's actually not true. In fact, we continually evolve our policies and enforcement, usually during steady state times as we gather data and experience on how to police Reddit effectively according to our principles. What a big media blow up might do is prompt us to make a statement clarifying our principles and feelings about the matter as a way of contributing to the dialogue around that event. The response was so scathing that another admin had to step in to address the issue at hand. All right, folks, this discussion has pretty obviously devolved and we're not getting anywhere. The blame for that definitely lies with us. We're trying to explain some of what has been going on here, but the simultaneous banning of that set of subreddits entangled in the situation has hurt our ability to have that conversation with you, the community. A lot of people are saying what we're doing here reeks of bullshit, and I don't blame them. We were having a huge amount of debate internally at Reddit Incorporated. A lot of members on our team could not understand what we were doing here, why we were continuing to allow ourselves to be party to this flagrant violation of privacy, why we hadn't made a statement regarding what was going on, and how on earth we got to this point. It was messy, and continues to be. The pseudo result of all of this debate and argument has been that we should continue to be as open as a platform as we can be, and that while we in no way condone or agree with this activity, we should not intervene beyond what the law requires. Then, we obliviously did something which heavily confused this message. We banned r slash the fappening and related subreddits. The confusion which was generated in the community was obvious, immediate, and massive. And we even had internal team members surprised by the combination. Why are we sending out a message about how we're being open as a platform and not changing our stance, and then immediately banning the subreddits involved in this mess? The situation we had in our hands was the following. These subreddits were, of course, the focal point for the sharing of these stolen photos. The images, which were DMCA'd, were continually being reposted constantly on the subreddit. We would take down images, thumbnails, in response to those DMCA's, but it quickly devolved into a game of whack-a-mole. This same practice was occurring with the underage photos, requiring our constant intervention. The mods were doing their best to keep things under control and in line with the site rules, but problems were still constantly overflowing back to us. It became obvious that we were going to have to watch these subreddits constantly or shut them down. We chose the latter. Sounds like a massive fuck up that could have been avoided if Reddit just divulged the point that they needed to remove r slash the fappening due to DMCA takedowns and spam of illegal content rather than the whole free speech song and dance only to turn around and ban a swath of subreddits. But hey, who am I to judge? The CEO of Reddit and a staff member behind the notorious every man is responsible for his own soul blog post would later resign from his position around nine months after the fappening. It's worth noting that this wasn't directly related to the fappening at all. Rather, due to internal disagreements with the board over rejected proposals such as relocating Reddit's office. But who is John Randall Menaces, the man who actually created Reddit's most infamous subreddit? Well, he goes by John's McJohn, and recently the Washington Post wrote a pretty lengthy piece about him without revealing his actual name, although it seems as though the reporters know exactly who he is. Men Menaces would incur incredible amounts of criticism from many newspapers and tabloids, seeking to ridicule the man who had facilitated massive amounts of stolen nude pictures. John would claim he had done no wrong and that his only regret was creating the fappening forum under his own username, rather than on a burner account. Without irony, given the gross invasion of privacy that these celebrities suffered, he now bemoans that his own privacy has been invaded because of his part in the fappening. Referring to a brief piece on him in the Washington Post, Menaces said, I'm not happy about all this, but it happened. 
The Nixon administration couldn't stop the Washington Post from exposing Watergate, so what hope do I have? The article continues, claiming Menaces told Mail Online that he spent over 40 hours during the Labor Day weekend ensuring that his subreddit became the go-to location to view the explicit material, which had originally leaked out on a more underground site called 4chan. I didn't necessarily share the content with millions, I just created the subreddit and tried to ride the wave. I only put up links to other posts that were doing well. I never uploaded a single thing, and I never downloaded a single thing. That wasn't why I created the fappening. I created it because I liked the name and I wrote out what happened, but if people want to call me a hero or cyber warrior, then I'm not going to stop them. It wasn't me who brought these photos to the mainstream, the users did that. The actual hackers are going to jail, there's no doubt about that, and they deserve to go to jail. But as for the rest of the internet finding these pictures and posting them, it's already out there. John would later do a Reddit AMA about his time as the owner of r slash the fappening and his views on his eventual closure. I did not start the sub to be the prime place on the internet for celeb leaks, he said. I created it because I like the name, and I thought it would get a decent sized community modded by myself and a few other mods that selected. I never thought it'd be the fastest growing sub in history, but when it was, I rolled with it and tried to ensure any content was in line with Reddit's rules. Since the hype around the fappening died down, Menaces has continued with a low profile, despite his prolific history on Reddit. I decided Thursday that I wouldn't delete my account, and if the press wants to send me through the ringer, so be it. I won't be bullied into silence. Why is my being on an asexuality website or an Asperger's board even relevant to my work on r slash the fappening? His account, Johns McJohn, was later deleted, alongside his contributions to forums on cocaine, asexuality, and autism. All are now lost to time. But you see, Reddit isn't all bad. To show the world just how good they all are, a few would begin a charity drive. They would begin raising money for the California Prostate Cancer Foundation, ultimately raising over $6,000 in donations in a few hours. Why were they donating to a prostate cancer charity over a situation that predominantly affected female celebrities? Well, the reasoning was that since Jennifer Lawrence had donated to it at one point, so should the fappening community. Uh, yeah. The forum would quickly become the foundation's top fundraiser. Most of the donations would be signed anonymously by donors in honor of US actress Jennifer Lawrence. Holy shit, the news would be amazing. Spreaders of leaked celebrity nude photos raise millions for prostate cancer. The charity then decided to return the money out of respect for victims of the fappening. Redditors would respond in kind. What kind of charity doesn't accept free money for research for such an important cause? This makes me really mad. They are literally saying that Jennifer Lawrence is more important than a cure for cancer. But this was not the end of Reddit's charity-related shenanigans. Water.org was their next target. They would also close the donation page to Redditors. The response from the wider Reddit community was unamused to say the least. I love how Reddit will try to justify any terrible thing they do by trying to set up a charity drive. But look, we're donating for a good cause. We can't be doing anything bad. It's really disgusting in my opinion. But as a prior Redditor predicted, the media would actually run with the story, just not in the way they intended. Vice published an article titled, Charities don't want these Redditors come stained money, with Daily Mail and The Drum following closely behind with equally disdainful articles about Redditors. Reddit would never be the same after the fappening. The changes in management meant many of the controversial, often derided subreddits, as listed earlier, have since been banned by staff seeking to instill new, cultural values to the site. Whether you think they were necessary changes because these communities well overstepped the proverbial line in the sand, or that this was when Reddit jumped the shark and stopped being an online forum for free and open discussion, doesn't really matter. These newly implemented policies were ultimately here to stay, no matter what for better or for worse. As Reddit tore itself apart over the actions of administrators, 4chan was having a slightly different discussion. Invite 6 out of 10 single mom friend out for drinks. After a few drinks in her, she's hilarious. Bars close, take her for a drive while we smoke a J. She starts dropping red pill shit, tells me how much she thinks feminists are bullshit. Forget my MGTOW ways, going for a kiss. She's all over me, blows me like her plane is about to crash. We fuck in the front seat of my car. My first time in 10 months. Blow a massive load inside her. Oh fuck, I never asked if she was on the pill. She isn't. I guess I'll buy you plan B then. She laughs and says she should get her period soon, so I'll know then. Start to panic inside. Take her home. She starts talking about how next time will be even better because it won't be in a car. Holy shit, what have I done? I come home and I find out Kate Upton and Jennifer Lawrence nudes leaked. Why in the name of Zeus's butthole didn't I just stay home and fap? 
So true, Anon, so true. In a statement released in the days following the initial photos, Apple would say, We wanted to provide an update to our investigation into the theft of photos of certain celebrities. When we heard of the theft, we were immediately outraged and immediately mobilized Apple's engineers to discover the source. Our customers' privacy and security are of the utmost importance to us. What Apple didn't mention here was that they were working with the FBI. Together, the two organizations had managed to tighten the net around those who had originally hacked the photos. Now, the feds were ready to bring the hackers to justice. When the hackers weren't utilizing brute force methods to access the accounts of celebrities, they were using social engineering, which sounds a lot cooler than it actually is. The hackers would collect the celebrities' information, such as personal emails and possible passwords, using a social engineering toolkit, otherwise known as an SET. From there, the process was simple, phishing. They would create a new account, often pretending to be Apple, using the bogus pseudonym to send fake emails to these celebrity accounts. The emails would ask these celebrities for their personal information for whatever reason, and then use the stolen credentials to access the celebrity's account. From there, the hackers could download the celebrity's entire iCloud backup using phone breakers to access every single piece of information that had been backed up, including files, messages, contacts, and the most prized possession of all, photos. Apple's cooperation with the feds had led them to track a single IP address. That one IP had managed to access well over 572 individual iCloud accounts nearly 300 times. If that wasn't enough, the same IP address was used to reset nearly 2,000 iCloud account passwords 4,980 times. Not suspicious at all. October 2014, the home of Emilio Herrera and his parents is raided by federal agents and the police. His computers, cell phones, USB sticks, floppy disks, and a Kindle Fire were all confiscated by the FBI for further investigation. Despite not being arrested at the time, Herrera was certainly a prime suspect. Using his devices, law enforcement was able to identify four other suspects, all involved in the hacking of celebrity devices. Herrera would take a plea deal in August of 2016. He pled guilty to using a phishing scheme to access unauthorized accounts. Authorities believed he worked alone and didn't sell or share any of his collection online. He was sentenced to 16 months in prison a term he started in March of 2018. Investigators have identified a second suspect in what was referred to as the fathening two years ago. Ryan Collins, a 36-year-old man from Lancaster, Pennsylvania, would be the first hacker arrested by police for his involvement in the fathening. He was widely purported to be the man behind the fathening by the media. British national broadcaster, the BBC, would release an article titled Meet the man behind the leak of celebrity nude photos called The Fappening. Collins would seemingly delete his social media accounts following his arrest. However, the media managed to collect a few pieces of information about him. It's understood he's married with two children and studied science and technology at James Madison University in Virginia. He too was not connected to posting any photos online, but he would take a guilty plea to one count of gaining unauthorized access to a protected computer to obtain information. Prosecutors would allege that from November 2012 to September 2014, Collins would use phishing emails to have victims unknowingly hand their usernames and passwords to him. However, of the maximum five-year sentence he could have been handed, prosecutors would recommend he only serve 18 months in prison for his actions, despite stealing the usernames and passwords of over 600 people. The FBI's statement on the matter would only seek to affirm Collins' guilt and the pain he had caused victims through his actions. Ryan Collins would serve 18 months in prison starting in October of 2016. According to an article by Vanity Fair, Jennifer Lawrence expressed disappointment over the relative short sentence in the past, but told the outlet that she chose not to get her own sort of retribution in a court of law by suing. Instead, she was interested in healing. In August of 2016, Edward M., a 28-year-old from Chicago, Illinois, would agree to his own plea deal, admitting to illegally accessing over 300 Apple iCloud and Gmail accounts between November 2013 to August 2014. On January 24th, 2017, he was sentenced to nine months in prison and was ordered to pay $5,700 in restitution to cover the counseling services of one unnamed celebrity victim. In April 2018, George Garofano, a 26-year-old from Connecticut, would plead guilty to the same crimes as above. His attorney would claim, this is a young man who has no criminal record that got involved with some more sophisticated types who turned out to be criminals. He was easily led by these criminal types to do things he would not normally do. He was led into this phishing scheme and he was naive and went along with it. He was accused of hacking into 240 iCloud accounts of different individuals, including Hollywood stars 
and was sentenced to eight months in prison. Possibly the most depraved of all of those tried for their involvement in the fappening is Christopher Brannon. Brannon was a teacher from Virginia and was the fifth, and at the time of writing, the final man to be arrested in relation to the fappening on October 22nd, 2018. Up until that point, he probably thought he got away with it. Brannon would plead guilty to the charges of aggravated identity theft and unauthorized access to a protected computer. He would be responsible for the hacking of well over 200 people. But his victims weren't just celebrities. He would use similar phishing attacks on his underage sister-in-law as well as teachers, former colleagues, and even students. His egregious sexual violation of minors, former colleagues, and celebrity superstars would net Brandon a sentence of 34 months in prison, starting on March 1st, 2019. This would be the longest sentence for anybody involved. The man behind the original posts on 4chan and Anon IB that blew the lid on the entire operation remains at large, and at this point, will likely never be found. But also, and it's an interesting note here, none of the men ended up pleading guilty to distributing the images, and investigators actually say they don't have any evidence linking the four suspects to any of the actual leaks, or any evidence that actually shows they shared or uploaded the information just that they got it. Jennifer Lawrence has probably been the most open about her views on the scandal out of all of those it affected. It is not a scandal. It is a sex crime. It is a sexual violation. It's disgusting. The law needs to be changed, and we need it to change. That's why these websites are responsible. I can't imagine being that thoughtless and careless and so empty inside. Even Harvey Weinstein said Jennifer Lawrence deserves a break. I feel like I got gangbanged by the fucking planet. Just because I'm a public figure, just because I'm an actress, does not mean that I asked for this. It does not mean that it comes with the territory. It's my body and it should be my choice. And the fact that it is not my choice is disgusting. I can't believe that we even live in that kind of world. Hackers are hackers and hackers are gross, disgusting perverts. Another victim, Amber Heard, would speak at the Capitol Hill Visitor Center in Washington, D.C. to plead with lawmakers to make non-consensual sharing of nude photographs punishable by up to five years in prison. In her speech, she would claim, non-consensual porn is one of the worst violations of privacy and it doesn't discriminate. Instead, it disproportionately affects women around the world with the devastating consequences. It can result, and often does, in devastating economic, social, and psychological consequences. My stolen and manipulated photos are still online to this day posted again and again with sexually explicit and humiliating and degrading headlines about my body, about myself. I continue to be harassed, stalked, and humiliated by the theft of those images. The consequences to my personal safety, dignity, and livelihood are severe. Others would take a more forgiving perspective than the celebrities and their lawyers. The danger of the fappening is that most people still believe that the way to deal with every social problem is to make a government addict against it and to punish the perpetrators. Photos are just data, and transmitting data is free speech. No one should be prosecuted at all other than the hacker who originally tampered with Apple's servers in order to steal the photos, who may not have been the same person as the one who distributed them. Instead, this event should teach people to be more careful about data security. We shouldn't store all of our information together in one location with an organization that keeps all the encryption keys. That creates a target. If the celebrities had their own encryption keys, or if they stored their own data, it would have been much more difficult for their photos to be collected by hackers. Kate Upton probably lost 10 plus million dollars from the inevitable, I'm finally actually showing my nipples, photo shoot that bikini models often do. Jennifer Lawrence is no longer Miss Cutesy Fun Girl. Victoria Justice is now much more famous than she was two weeks ago. To this day, the fappening, especially when factoring in how leaks continued releasing for close to a month after the original post, remains the largest single leak of celebrity nudes in history. And hopefully, it remains that way. The fallout it caused between online communities and the effects it's had on the internet as a whole have certainly not been worth the apparent wins that were leaked. And the damage it caused to the victims may be a distant memory to us today. However, it's important to think about just how harrowing it would feel if someone we loved faced the same situation that they did. Whether you remember the fappening as a harrowing tale of breach privacy and perversion, or one of the most entertaining downward spirals in recent internet history, really, it doesn't matter. What matters is that we don't let it be forgotten. I've been Turkey Tom, thanks for watching, and until next time, leave me alone. Not that funny anymore